Hello po, magandang araw sa inyong lahat at ngayon ay October 7, 2022. Thank God, it's a Friday! At 79 days na lang, Pasko na! Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Welcome po sa The Stock Market Today, kung saan man kayo nararoon sa Europe, sa Turkey, sa Switzerland, sa Hong Kong, sa Singapore, sa Middle East, Dubai, welcome po kayong lahat. Ang ating balita ay tungkol muli sa Eagle Summit. Pero bago ang lahat, kung first time niyo po sa channel na ito, ako po si Benji Chidoro, isang retired bank officer, at naging invest po ako sa Philippine Stock Market since 2007. Araw-araw ko po minabalita ang pinaka-latest news tungkol sa inyong paborito at pinaka-aktibong stocks sa Philippine Market. At kung gusto niyo po ng content, niimbitan ko po kayo mag-subscribe sa aking channel. Kung meron po kayong stocks na gustong ipareview o meron po kayong question tungkol sa Philippine Stock Market or Wealth Management, comment lang po sa comment box at aking pa-prioritize. Hindi po ako financial advisor. Ang mga sinasabi ko po dito ay hindi po dapat kunin as financial advice. And also, get well soon, Mari. We're praying for your quick recovery. Tito Sam, we're also praying for you. Huwag kayong alis dahil babahagi ko sa inyo ang ating financial headlines at ang resulta ng trading sa ating PSE ngayong araw, October 7, 2022, dito lamang sa The Stock Market Today. Ang ating headlines ay galing po sa business world. Philippines raises $2 billion from dollar bonds. AMRO slashes Philippine growth outlook for 2023. Pagkatapos po niyan ay dito naman po tayo sa corporate news. Eagle Cement shares jump as SMC sets acquisition. Ito po ang ating main news. SMC plans to sell power to WESM after rate hike denial. And then MPT Mobility O&M firm adds new service rebrands. And ABS-CBN Warner Brothers Inc. deal on airing of shows in Asia. Pero ito pong ating main news tungkol po sa Eagle Cement. Shares jump as SMC sets acquisition. Shares in Eagle Cement Corp surged nearly 4% on Thursday as its majority shareholders agreed to sell their holdings to a unit of listed conglomerate San Miguel Corporation or SMC, prompting the buyer to set up a mandatory tender offer of the cement maker's shares. In a disclosure, Eagle Cement said it was advised by its majority shareholders about the signing of a share purchase agreement on October 5 for the sale of around 4.425 billion shares to the San Miguel Equity Investments Inc. for 22.02 pesos apiece or a total of about 97.44 billion. Separately, SMC told the stock exchange that as a result of the planned acquisition, of the 85.5% of Eagle Cement, the buyer is required to conduct a tender offer of the 11.5% shares held by the target company's minority shareholders. The acquisition of Eagle Cement offers a complementary approach to the current investment strategy of SMC in the cement industry will increase its foothold in cement business and provide opportunity to implement its plan to expand its cement business, SMC said. The selling shareholders are Far East Holdings Inc., SMC Vice Chairman and Eagle Cement Chairman Ramon Ang, John Paul L. Ang, and Monica L. Ang. SMC said the acquisition of the Eagle Cement shares will be paid in cash. It added that the basis 
for the negotiation and determination of the sale price was the valuation undertaken by an independent firm using global valuation standards. SMC said the closing of the transaction is subject to the approval of the Philippine Competition Commission. It intends to file a request for exemption with the Securities and Exchange Commission to allow the tender offer to start after the PCC approval. On Tuesday, SMC said that a special board meeting on October 4 authorized the acquisition of the controlling stake in Eagle Cement, which manufactures and distributes cement. On the stock market on Thursday, SMC shares jumped by 2 pesos or 2.02% to 101 apiece, while Eagle Cement shares climbed 74 centavos or 3.99% or 19.30 pesos apiece. So yan po ang ating main news. At tignan naman po natin kung meron po kayong mga comments. Okay, meron po ditong comments si Nicomides Fordan. Hello po Sir Benji, saan po makikita yung buy rating ng BDO in every stock? Salamat po and God bless. Kung meron po kayong broker, nagbibigay po sila ng um, study, no? ng um, bawat stock na kinocover po nila. In my case, ako po ay kliyente ng BDO Securities eh. Both uh, traditional trading and online. Kaya meron po ako nito yung uh, daily report nila. Ito po, no? Ito po kahapon eh, October 6. So example po ito, October 6, sinasummarize po niya yung news. At pagkatapos po dito, ay nandito po yung kanilang stock coverage na meron silang analyst na nag -e evaluate ng bawat stock based po dun sa financial statements na sinabit nila sa PSE. So, based po dito ay nagre-rate po sila ng buy or sell. Pero kailangan po ay meron po kayong broker. Ito po yung nagiging basis ko. So, kung gusto nyo po ng ganito like BDO ay mag-apply po kayo as a client of BDO Securities, traditional or online. Yan po, makakuha po kayo ng ganitong write-up, ano? daily po ito na kinukuha. And sometimes, so meron pong ganito, no? yung Philippine Snapshot Strategy and Economics, yesterday po ito. For instance, ano ang effect ng Fed sa tightening ng, ano, ng, ng pagtaas ng kanilang interest rates, no? Yan, meron po silang summary dyan, ano? Yun po, doon ko po kinukuha. Pero, hindi po lahat ng tao binibigyan po niyan, mga kliyente lang po ng BDO. I'm also a client of First Metro. For instance, ito po, no? Meron po din silang research. So, halimbawa, if you click on research here, meron po, halimbawa, hanapin niyo po, say, si Ayala Corporation. So, lalabas po dyan si Ayala Corporation tapos sasabihin po niya yung profile po niya Ayala Corporation is mainly involved in the development and sale and leasing of real estate. Yan po and then yung stats po niya like uh, 12 month percentage change etc. No? Market cap nandito rin po nakalagay. Tapos valuation uh, 2021 financial statements as compared to 2020 financials meron din po income net income and the balance sheet component no yun po yun po ang binibigay ng bawat trader pero hindi po sila pare-pareho ang BDO po nagbibigay nagbibigay po ng ganitong rating ano parang sinasummarize po niya yung news for the day ito po yung daily digest nila at pagkatapos po, yung summary ng kanilang stock coverage na kanilang inanalyze uh, mismo. No? Yun po, doon ko po kinukuha. So, if you want the same information or the same piece, then mag-apply po kayo sa BDO Securities as a client, whether online or uh, traditional. Pero, mas maganda po kung online dahil makukuha nyo na po kagad eh. Doon lang po sa bungad nila, meron pong doon research. At makikita nyo na po ito, no? Ay, hindi nyo makikita ito. But makukuha nyo po yan sa research. Okay po? Okay, so let's now go to the Philippine Stock Exchange. 
and the Philippine Stock Exchange Index on what happened today. Ayan po ang ating index. Lagyan natin ng indicator. Yan, slightly down. No? 2.08 points down. At uh, makikita po natin, yung ating candlestick ay from dalawa na green, tatlong sunod-sunod po na pababa. No? So, ang pinaka-movement po ng ating index ay actually pababa eh. So, if we'll be drawing a parallel channel, yan po, no? Paganyan po siya. And still continues to move downwards, ano? So, more or less, yan po yung pinaka-channel natin, ano? With a slight overshoot. Yun po. At bearish po ang ating index dahil ang ating tatlong indicators, yung black, blue, at orange, representing the long, medium, and short term, are above our candlesticks. And our RSI is near oversold, nasa 34 po, bearish po yan. Sa market activity naman, 84 companies ang umabante, 96 ang umatras, at 44 ang hindi nagbago. Ang all share index natin ay slightly up or almost flat. 0 0.04 lang po yung change ng ating index, 2.08, pareho ba? Tama. And... Yung all share natin ay, all, ay almost flat. Ang PSEI ay almost flat din. Although yung isa ay pula, yung isa ay positive. Ano? Nangyayari po yan. No? Kasi magkaiba po yung the all share index represents all the shares in the PSE. Whereas the PSEI index is represented by 30 companies only. Yan po. Ngayon yung ating sectoral indices ay mixed no? Yung holding companies, industrials, at services ay nasa green, samantalang ang financials, mining, at properties ay pula. So, makikita po natin, halos flat po ang ating index. So, ang all share at ang PSE index. So, tingnan po natin ang ating mga stocks at uh, I-review po natin ang ating top 6 stocks. So, reviewin po natin ang ating top 6 most active stocks. Yan po si SMC, ICT, BPI, BDO, GTCAP, at URC. So, tignan na po natin si SMC. Uy! Well, actually, nagbabound si SMC pero ngayon ay red candlestick po siya. Previously, nag-close po siya sa 101 at ngayon ay nag-close din sa 101. So, kaya po red po ito ay dahil nagbukas po siya sa 100 at nag-open po siya ng 102 rather at nag-close po siya sa 100. Pero yung closing price po niya ay kapareho ng closing price yesterday. No? So, may dividenda po si SMC na 35 centavos. So, yung ating support for SMC, masasabi po natin na on the short and medium term ay bullish po si SMC dahil nakailalim po ang short at medium term indicator in the short and medium term. No? So, yung pinaka support 95.59 samantalang ang resistance niya ang pinaka malapit ay mala, makikita po natin dito sa 104.39. Support and resistance, di po yan exact points. Yan po ay area. ICT naman po tayo. ICT, yan, nagre-recover po si ICT. No? Tingnan natin kung merong fundamental si ICT. International Container Services, lakihan natin to May buy rating po siya. 279 po ang kanyang target price or an upside of more or less 60%. No? 60% ang upside dyan. 63 doon eh, pero 177 na po. So, on the short term ay nagre-recover po si ICT at 
kamakailan lang ay nagkaroon siya ng oversold level sa RSI na 20 noong September 20 or September 30. So there is a support here. I see a support here at 157 at ang pinaka resistance po niya na naging support ay nandito po sa level na ito na sa 181 to 182 ang kanyang pinaka resistance level and on the short term ay paakyat po CICT. Ang RSI naman almost in the midpoint na sa 49.63 or almost 50. Then next we have BPI. Si BPI ay naka-recover naka po siya. So ito consolidation phase po ito eh, no? Yan po. Kasama na po ngayon. No? Pero ngayon ay nagkaroon po siya ng what do you call this? A hindi naman po ito breakout eh. Pero may surge po siya with volume. No? 1.86% up. But yung number of days kasi dapat kasi at least 2 weeks eh. Pero hindi pa po tayo nag to 2 weeks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. One week pa lang po eh. At mas mataas po kasi yung surge dito. Dapat po kasi yung akyat ng presyo niya ay highest within the two-week level at meron po siyang volume para masabi po nating breakout. So, ang support ni BPI nasa 89.34 at ang higher resistance nandito po sa level na ito, 96.52. Tingnan natin ang target price ni BPI is 112 or about a 23% upside. Then next, we have si BDO naman tayo. BDO is slumping. Nasa support level na po siya. At actually po, magandang bumili ng BDO. So based po dito sa price ng first metro, ah, hindi ko lang maipakita. No? Nasa 148 ang presyo ni BDO. Yan po yung target price ni first metro sa BDO. 148 at yung support level ni BDO lower support is here at 111 samantalang ang resistance level niya ay nandito po sa level na ito nasa 122 more or less so ang RSI po niya ay nasa 39.4 meaning on the bearish side po siya and then GT cup si GT cup ay Naku, bumababa po si GT Cup. And nagkaroon po ng blip dito. No? Ibig sabihin, tumaas po siya at naging bullish po at this point. In fact, nag-overbought level po siya dito noong August 16. Ano? Sa so, mapapansin po ninyo, overbought level po siya at 72.37. Ano? Ito po yun. Yan. Pero after na nung mag-overbought po siya ay bumaba na po. Ngayon po ay oversold na. <laughs> Nasa oversold level po. Kaya po maganda pong bumili ng GT Cup eh. Although bearish po siya ha. So pagka nakakita po kayo ng ganito, may pangitain po yan na tataas. No? Magbabounce po yung stock. Bihira po mag-oversold ang uh, GT Cup. No? The last time na nag-oversold po siya ay noong, mas makikita ba natin dito? Hindi. Masyado na malayo yung oversold level. I think it's here. 30 lang to eh. Pero uh, technically hindi pa over. Dito, nung pandemic time, nag-oversold level. Oh. Ito. Yan yung oversold level niya. Ito yun. <laughs> Tapos unti-unti na umakyat. Anyway, bihira po mag-oversold si GT Cup, no? At uh, pangitain po yan na pwede pong mag-bounce si GT Cup. In the meantime, ang ating pinaka-support level for GT Cup, nandito po, nasa 415 to 400, ano? Actually, nasa level na yan. Ayan, siguro ma malalagay natin sa 406 ang pinaka-support level at ang resistance Ito yung dating support na naging resistance na sa 442. And then finally, we have URC. Si URC ay 
Yan, naku, bearish po siya, no? Although, I think it's holding support, no? Support level na rin po ito, eh. Nandito po siya sa 110.30. Ang pinaka-support level po ni URC. Higher support, resistance rather, ay nandito sa 119.09. Pero bearish po, po yung stance ni ang lagay ni URC dahil nasa taas po yung ating mga indicators indicating na there is a downward trend for both the short, medium, and long-term indicators. Ang RSI po ay bearish at 38. Okay po, yan po ang ating report sa stock market ikapito ng Oktubre 2022. Ito po si Benji Chidoro nagpapaalala. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagtangkilik at hanggang sa muli. Happy weekend, stay safe, God bless, and bye for now.